Alright guys, in this video I'll be setting up a Tesla Cybertruck using the UAC rig and then animating this scene you see here. I picked this model up from CG Trader and it is by Des Monster. I'll put a link to the model in the description below. I'm also going to use a nice Mars Terrain model that I downloaded from ArtStation and that is by Vladimir Somov. I'll put a link to that model in the description as well. So I'm loading the FBX for the Tesla, I haven't touched it in any way. This is right from the site. It looks good. I'm going to import the UAC rig. And it looks like we're facing the wrong way. I'm going to rotate it so Z is facing forward. The scale seems about right. And the tires look good. And we have a center point on the wheels, so that's a plus. So snap the green control to the front wheel center point and the red control to the rear wheel center point. Now we're gonna to pop to a front view, pull them out a little bit so they're just outside the tire. We don't want these guidelines to intersect. Now let's set the tire width. We want that just outside the tire as well. Then we're going to go to side view, set the tire side wall. We're going to make sure this ring is outside the rim. And now the wheels are done. Do we have a steering wheel? Let's hide the glass. Yes, we do. So let's find a center point, which might be pretty difficult actually with this. It's probably somewhere here. So I'm going to go to the side view and hide these. Let's tilt it and manually position it as best we can. That should work. Alright, let's connect it. So I'm going to go with the constraint method. That way I can export an Alembic cache and render this out in a minute. So I'm going to hide the top node so we can eliminate the pieces. You can combine your tires into one mesh if you want to. That'd be a little bit more efficient, but you don't have to. So if to do that, just go to mesh combine. And then we're going to hit the tire button with the skin method active. Remember, tires must use the skin method if you want them to deform. So let's select the wheels, switch to the constraint method. Now the wheels need to be separated for the constraint method to work. They already are, so we can hit the wheel button. But before I do, there's this piece right here, which is probably going to cause a problem. So I'm just going to break this off. Now I can select the wheels and hit the wheel button. We're going to select the steering wheel and hit the steering wheel button. Now let's just select the rest of the model pieces. We could probably go through and merge a few of these pieces, but I'm just going to go ahead and hit the body button. Now everything is gone. We can just unhide the top node and we are done. So let's test it out. It drives. Now the tires, looking good. And the steering works. Although we do have this big gap here with no model detail. Now this is a good example of how we could use some of the pieces from the included chassis model. Let's hide the tires, the wheels, I know they're not accurate for this vehicle, but it's certainly better than nothing. So, And the rest of these pieces can stay. Now we have a little something just to fill that void. Everything looks good. It's all working. And we're all set up. So let's animate it. I'm going to take that Mars Terrain Mesh and drag it in. 
Let's move it. Scale it down a bit. Now this looks cool. But I think it's going to be difficult to pull a curve from this. So let's do a sneaky little trick. Create a polyplane. Move it into place. Give it some subdivisions. We don't need a ton of detail here, so don't go crazy. And now we shrink wrap it. So select the polyplane first, and then the terrain second. Go to deform, shrink wrap, and set it to closest. Let's move these points around with soft select turned on. Basically we're trying to form a nice edge loop so we can pull a curve from it. Something that loosely matches our terrain. So it's worth spending a little time here. We want a fairly clean curve. Now this edge loop looks like it's going to work out well so I'm just going to pull it out just a little bit more. That should be good. And we won't need all of it, so I'm just going to trim down the selection here. Right, that'll do the job. Select it. And hit Add Selected. And we're going the wrong way. So remove it, hit Reverse, select the curve or the edge loop, and let's just add it again. There we go. Now I know we're not perfectly conformed to every little bump here, and that's fine, you don't want to be. This curve is just a general path the truck takes. The wheel controls, they're the ones that are going to be moving up and down on all the bumps once we connect it to the terrain. So let's set the rig to proxy. I'm going to close this for now. And we can key our curve path attribute at zero. Oh, let me move the timeline into the video view. Let me extend the timeline as well. Hold on a sec. Let's go with 70% of the curve. That should probably work. Maybe a little further. How's that look? Not too bad. Let's have it roll back a little at the end. There we go. Now we could go in and adjust the tilt of the car with the path spin attribute. If things were getting a little bit steep on one side, I thought we might need to use this, but I don't think we will need to. So I'm going to move on and set up a good camera angle. Something like this. So I want the truck to come in on the right side. Now let's turn on the dynamics. And hit play. You know what, I'm going to up the bounce on this, seeing as we're on Mars. So let's push up the sensitivity and I'm going to increase the influence for the up and down and the forward and back just a little bit and I'm going to double the side motion. Now I think we're ready for a play blast. So turn off proxy, hide the rig for a moment I have a hotkey set for a play blast, so I'm just going to hit that. And here it is.
I'm going to duplicate the camera so we can come back to it. I think we need to lower the drive control just a bit. Feels a bit high. And let's go ahead and link the wheels to the terrain. So I do recommend duplicating your terrain and just trimming it down so we have a more focused area to work with. This will up the performance a bit with the geometry constraints. Now, select your duplicated terrain first and a wheel control second. Make sure you select it in that order and then go to the rigging tab and hit constraint geometry. Let's do that for the remaining three wheels. Terrain, wheel, constraint, terrain, wheel, constraint, and bosh, we're all done. So all wheels will now follow the terrain. I'm going to pop back to our render cam for a final play blast. Not too shabby. I'm going to add some motion to the camera, export it, and then render it out. Here's the final render, which was done in Marmoset Toolbag. One quick thing before I sign off, I put out an update 2.2, and that one addressed an issue with curve point order when generating a curve from an edge loop. So thanks for letting me know about that bug, and thanks for your continued support. Please subscribe, ring the bell, and give it a like if you want to see more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.